untap your full potential with the untapped deck tracker. Both the in-game overlay and the personal stats provide a lot of value. Download it for free today using the link below and you'll be supporting the channel at the same time. Hello and welcome to another historic game the video. I've been dipping my toes back into the format and once you accept the fact that there's going to be a few alchemy cards floating around, the format's actually quite enjoyable. So today we're taking a look at a white, black and green or Abzan colored equipment deck featuring a couple new cards that were recently introduced, such as Kemba, the 2 mana 2-2 two -two legendary cat cleric, saying when Kemba or another cat enters the battlefield under our control, we can attach up to one target equipment we control to that creature. And then equipped creatures we control also get plus one plus one, and in the late game for 5 mana we can potentially generate a 2-2 cat token, which we can also immediately equip for free if we have an equipment in play. And what equipment are we trying to equip for free? Well, there's Colossus Hammer, 1 mana to play, normally 8 mana to equip, to give the equipped creature plus 10 plus 10 and it loses flying. So playing a turn 1 Colossus Hammer into a turn 2 Kemba results in a 13-13, which is not too bad. Then we also have three copies of Belt of Giant Strength, two mana to play, and then normally ten mana to equip, getting an X mana discount, where X is the power of the creature it targets, so targeting Kemba would still cost us eight mana, and then the equipped creature has a base, power and toughness 10-10. So Belt not as good in multiples as Hammer, but still very powerful, and if we already have a creature equipped with a Hammer, then we can also potentially equip the Belt for free, since it's already going to get a 10 mana discount, so that's also quite synergistic if we need to get up to 20 power. And then we've got a couple more ways to attach our equipment without having to pay 8 mana, and that includes the new Kemba's Outfitter, a 1 mana 2 1 Cat Artificer, being a cat also potentially synergizes with Kemba, and then when it enters the battlefield we either choose an equipment in play or one in our hand, and then it will perpetually gain the ability to equip for just 1 mana, so getting to move around our hammer for just 1 mana is quite the upgrade. And then finally we also have two copies of a Resolute Strike, an instant saying target creature gets plus two plus two until end of turn. If it's a warrior, we may attach an equipment we control to it for free. Now sadly the Outfitter and Kemba are not warriors, but we do have four copies of Changeling Outcast, which is a 1-1 one -one that cannot block and cannot be blocked, and as a Changeling it has all creature types, including Cat, so if we play Outcast with Kemba out we can potentially equip something for free, and it's also warrior, so we can target it with a Resolute Strike, and then potentially put a hammer or belt on it for free, which is pretty nice on an unblockable creature. And then we also have two copies of Wilson, a 2-2 with a Reach, Trample and a Ward 2, so it has a bit of built-in protection, making it harder for the opponent to take it out with spot removal. And as a warrior we can also potentially equip it for free using Resolute Strike, so it has excellent synergy there too. Can also be specialized later in the game, doesn't come up very often, but is potentially a way to make Wilson larger if we can discard a green card or a forest. Of course don't have a whole lot of forest in this deck because most of our dual lands aren't forests, but can be a way to make it into a 5-5 with Reach Trample and Ward 2. We can turn it into a white Life Linker as well if we discard a white card or a Plains, and if we discard a Swamp or a black card we can potentially specialize it into a Menace creature, but again we are mostly happy just having a 2-2 with a bit of built-in protection that we can attach for free using Resolute Strike, also great with Outfitter if we can move a 1 mana Hammer or Belt onto it. And then our final equipment is a one-off Shadow Spear as a way to give Trample and Life Link. Both of those keywords are very useful. Trample gets past any chum blockers if we're playing against mono green elves, for instance, so the opponent cannot simply chum block our 20 powered creature. And then Life Link can be useful in a racing situation if we're up against, let's say, blue red wizards, which can still maybe fly over and close out the game with a bunch of burn spells. And for one mana we can also make permanents lose hexproof and indestructible until end of turn, which can also come up if you're maybe playing against a Darksteel Citadel that's been animated by an soul artifact, we can remove indestructible to attack past it, and then a Merfolk also has a legendary Merfolk God that can be indestructible, so Shadow Spear can come in handy there too. And then we've got a bit of cheap interaction to round out the deck, four copies of Thoughtseize, mainly here to take away opposing removal spells that could otherwise mess up our equipment synergies, and then a two copies of Fatal Push, as well as four copies of Portable Hole as our own cheap interaction. Portable Hole especially useful in the mirror match as it can exile opposing equipment even after they got a discount from the Outfitter, it can also be very useful against the blue-white affinity decks where they can have Foundry or cards like Ensoul Artifact on a Dark Seal Citadel which can be difficult to get past, and then of course still a one-mana removal spell against the various elf or wizards decks in the format. 
And then we also have four copies of Assemble the Team, which is a perfect way to round out this deck. A sorcery for two mana that lets us search the top third of our library, round it up for any card and put it into our hand. So this can help find our missing combo piece, whether it's an equipment, a way to equip for free, maybe we want some evasion so we can rely on the Trample from Wilson or the Unblockable from Outcast, or maybe even a Shadow Spear, and we can always find more interaction with it as well if we want to thought cease to take a look at the opponent's hand, or just need to clear a path and get rid of a blocker. And then we also get to play with Lurus as our companion, which also happens to be a cat, so it has excellent synergy with Kemba, allowing us to equip it for free, and then it's also a way in the late game to maybe get back some of our creatures or some equipment in the grindier matchups. And then our mana base has a lot of fast lanes, including Concealed Courtyard, Blooming Marsh, and the recently added Razor Verge Thicket. So we've got all 12 fast lands, so we don't have to take a ton of damage off our mana base, and we mostly only need two or three lands in play to operate. And then a couple of shock lands and pathways to round it out, so those will come into play untapped later. And then the channel lands, Buseju and Igancho, can also get a discount from controlling a legendary creature. And we've got both Wilson, Kemba, and potentially Loris to give those a discount. So yeah, that's our deck. Now let's jump in some games and see how the deck does. Okay, we're on the play, and our hand seems pretty decent. We've got two ways to equip on the cheap, and then our belt as our payoff card here. And then turn one, can play Outfitter, make our belt cheaper. And then turn two, most likely play belts. Up against elves. So we could also take a slightly different approach here. Go for Portable Hole plus Thought Seize, and then next turn I can play Belt and Equip, which I kind of like. So let's uh, Thought Seize first. Okay, so your typical Elf Tribal featuring Crater Hoof as well. They have two 3-mana payoff cards, Company at 4. Shepherd is mostly just a chum blocker that buys him a turn. Between Archdruid and Marwyn, they're both about the same power level. Probably take Archdruid. And then hope they can't cast a company in time. And then for now take the elf so they cannot cast a 3 mana elf on turn 2. Okay, Visionary. That's fine. So, let's go ahead and play Belt and Equip. And then next turn we could maybe assemble for another removal spell. Opponent needs a lance to cast something substantial. Which they found. They could have also channeled Busage, and I'm kind of surprised they didn't. Just get rid of the Belt here. But they're going for Marwyn, hoping to cast Collected Company next turn to take over. We did find Wilson, so that's a Trampler to potentially equip the belt onto. Opponent's going to be chumping with a Visionary here, unless we can assemble for a removal spell. And if I don't find removal, I can always decide to just get a land to cast Wilson if it's untapped. So let me make black and green, keep up black-white, which casts both Fatal Push and another Portable Hole. And then take it from there, and then we'll need to find a green untapped land for Wilson. So did we find removal? There's Fatal Push. Can also go for Portable Hole. Could have also gone for the Changeling Outcast, and then play Kemba, play Changeling, put the belt onto the Changeling so we can attack for 10 unblockable. I guess that might have been even better here. And our opponent's just gonna take it. Alright, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw. Our hand's got some cheap interaction. Outfitter and then assemble to hopefully find hammer or belt to combine with outfitter. So it's not perfect, but I think on the draw having two one matter removal spells is pretty important. So we'll give it a shot. Put in blue red. Potentially wizards. And yeah, there's a symmetry sage which I'm happy to take out. And then I think Portable Hole keeps the instant speed fatal push for later. Makes sense. Since both will answer about the same set of creatures. Next turn we can assemble if we don't need to kill anything and look for one of our equipments. 
Now the wizard deck can have some instant speed removal to potentially kill Outfitter before we equip it. Thoughtseize was an interesting twist, but I think going for Assemble first is still reasonable, and then next turn we can maybe Thoughtseize take away an instant speed burn spell so we can make sure we can equip. And yeah, we did find Hammer, which is probably the best we can do here. Just double checking, but sounds good to me. So Balmor can hit pretty hard, especially if there's more wizards to go with it. It's going to be a Swiss Peer, not a wizard, but still a powerful one drop in an aggressive burn deck like this one. So we'll have to do some damage control. Okay. So Thoughtseize, Fatal Push can play Hammer, and then next turn Outfitter equip. Alternatively, I can Thought Seize if the coast is clear. I could Outfit or Hammer, but I wouldn't be able to equip it yet. And it seems too risky to play Outfitter without Thought Seizing first. So let's start there. Opponent's gonna Wizard Slining a response. Don't mind seeing that. They missed out on all the extra triggers. And Reckless Charge, they can still flash back. Okay, so the coast is clear now for Outfitter. But I won't be able to equip it yet, so instead we'll Fatal Push and play Hammer. Alternatively, I can play Outfitter, hope they don't top deck removal. So next turn I can already be attacking with Outfitter. Which is not without risk, but... I guess it's worth a shot here, since that speeds up our clock by a whole turn. And then I should just push Balmor now, before they get any additional triggers. The flyer can also fly over a large creature, so... Opponent plays Crucible instead of holding it to channel. If your opponent did find removal for Outfitter, then we're on the Lurus plan. Swiss Peer gets in for one. So I imagine they don't have removal for Outfitter, otherwise we might have seen them get the extra prowess trigger, but maybe they're waiting for me to equip. And if I do spend the mana equipping, of course we can't put Lurus in hand anymore. Could also just play Hammer without equipping, and then put Lurus in hand. Although that does slow things down by a whole turn. And also means having to take two of my shock lands, so... I think we just equip and hope for the best. Okay, opponent did top deck of Wizard's Lightning. That's too bad. So, play tap lands. Might as well play Hammer, in case we find Kemba, so we can equip both Hammers right away. And then next turn put Lurus in hand, and hope not to take too much damage in the meantime. So yeah, they had a one turn window to find instant speed removal, and they did. Although I guess sorcery speed removal would have done it too, the way we played. And an Arcanist, uh oh, that's bad news. Especially with a Reckless Charge. Did find a Kemba, that was a good top deck. So, equip the expensive hammer for free. And then one mana to equip the second one. Now Arcanist will have a hard time attacking. And our opponent's on Chumblock duty. And then we can put Lurus in hand in the meantime. Also equip hammer for free once we play Lurus, as it is indeed a cat to synergize with Kemba, or we can just start making tokens with Kemba, which is probably even better if we don't draw a 6 land for Lurus. And unless they have a few bounce spells in the deck, unlikely to see them get rid of Kemba. So our opponent's just on the burn plan here, try and get in as much damage as possible, but if they attack with both, they would leave themselves dead on the way back. So I think our opponent's given up here. Wizards lining upstairs, block Swiss Spear, take four down to three and kill him on the way back. Alright, GG's, close one here against Blue Red Wizards, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, hand seems pretty decent. We've got Outfitter, Discounting Hammer, and even a Trampler to later equip. Sign me up. And then the best sequencing is probably Outfitter on turn 1, so we could potentially already equip it next turn and hit for 10. 
Only downside is a potential Thoughtseize taking away Hammer. And our opponent might be holding up a Fatal Push here. So the alternative would be playing Wilson, which with Ward they cannot Fatal Push anytime soon. But at the same time I also want to get the Hammer in play before they can potentially Thoughtseize it. So I think I still Hammer Equip here, which has the highest upside. But it does seem like they have the removal spell. And then next run we can Wilson equip, assuming it's still there. Okay. Could Thought Seize back. In case her opponent has another fatal push next turn with three mana, they could still pay for the ward. Wilson equip plays around a burn spell potentially. But uh I guess we'll try it like this. Okay, so Liliana. Yeah, that would have been the perfect answer here. So we'll take Liliana. Leave them with Fable as their turn 3 play. And then we can maybe assemble for a belt at some point to equip for free. In case Hammer's not enough. So Fable's gonna go digging for additional answers. And, uh, yeah, there's probably no downside to assembling first. See what we can find. No belts. Could pick up a Fatal Push to kill the token, or a Thought Seize to take away, let's say, Shieldred, which could technically trade for Wilson. Although, they would be taking a lot of damage in the process. Kemba as another creature is reasonable, a replacement Wilson. I also wouldn't mind... So we have some decent options. I kind of like a backup Wilson, assuming Shielder is going to trade for it. I would like another big Trampler. Opponent takes 12 down to 8. Hope they don't find another Liliana. Of course, Fatal Push could still do it. Alright, there's Shieldreds. Shaman attacks. So our opponent would fall to one if they take it here. So if I assemble, what am I looking for? If I find a belt, I can still play and equip it for free, which would be lethal. So let's go for it. And there's a belt. Twenty power with trample, get in there, and yeah, that's why Wilson is in the deck. Great recipient of all these cheap equipment. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, and we've got a pretty good hand. Just missing black for outcast, but uh, outfitter, discounting hammer, Kemba to equip for free as well. Could fall apart if the opponent answers our hammer. So there is a reason to play it out on turn 1 to play around Thoughtseize. So do we prefer playing hammer instead of playing outfitter so we can potentially attack for 10 on turn 2? Could of course sequence hammer into Kemba as well. So I think I do play hammer on turn 1. And then turn 2, either Kemba equipped for free or outfitter equipped for 1 mana. Opponent on red green aggro. So hopefully they don't have removal for artifacts. And then Kemba probably has the highest upside now. Because then if we find black mana, we can play outcast and equip the hammer onto the outcast for free. As it's also a cat being a changeling. Opponent's not quite dead in one attack, but it's close. Okay, opponent is Jun's scholars after all. So now Fatal Push potentially an answer to Kemba as well. Prodigy, so it looks like Shamans. And we found our black mana, perfect. So I'll attack for 13. Opponent's unlikely to jump with her Prodigy, which is a centerpiece of their deck. And then if we play Outcast, we'll have a Colossus Hammer equipped for free. Could still play Wilson as an extra blocker. If we're really scared of Prodigy, I could also assemble hoping to find a portable hole. 
but with our opponent getting an extra blocker, I think getting the outcast going is still more important. So play outcasts. And then Wilson has an extra blocker. Since the outcast itself cannot block. And our opponent explodes, yeah, at 5 life. They don't have an answer to the outcast, so they'll die next turn. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw with a beautiful hand. Cheap interaction, hammer, plus Kemba, and then even an outcast to make a large unblockable creature. And then assemble for redundancy in case the opponent can take away one of our pieces. Opponent on a reanimator deck with double unburial rights discarded to looting. So we're gonna have to be fast in this matchup. So turn one, play hammer. And then turn two, probably Kemba. And hope to kill them before turn four, which is when the opponent's potentially gonna combo off. So, yeah, play Kemba. Hope it doesn't get removed in response. And then I'm not sure if we'll need Outcast if our opponent doesn't present any creatures anyway. I've got two removal spells to clear a path as well. Best case scenario, we top deck a belt. So we can just uh, kill the opponent next turn. Since, yeah, they're still potentially on track to kill us on turn 4, which is going to be a turn before we can present lethal. Found a Wilson. So the best we can do here is to assemble in the hopes of finding a Thought Seize for a bit of interaction. Could take away a Mizzix Mastery, for instance, which can otherwise cast a free Emergent Ultimatum next turn. So we need to find a way to stop that from happening. Did not find a Thought Seize, that's too bad. So what's the next best thing here? Maybe grab a Belt so we can equip Kemba to present over 20 damage if necessary. And then we could also get the unblockable Changeling going if necessary. Tank for 13. And then play Outcasts. And hope for not dead. Okay, so opponent can flash back and burial rights. Or nope, just a Mizzix Mastery. So yeah, that we could have potentially taken away with the Thought Seas, but we didn't find one. And now Emergent Ultimatum, very likely to win the opponent a game. Opponent reveals a Dragon Storm, which has enough of a storm count to kill us here if our opponent can search up a Double Blade Wing and Terror of the Peaks to set up the infinite damage loop. And then a Scholar and Final Parting is also a combination that gets any card out of their deck, so they can find another Dragon Storm if we don't give the current one. So no matter what here, we should be dead. Our best hope is that our opponent has multiple copies of Varric's Blade Wing or Terror of the Peaks in hand that they won't be able to search up but that seems unlikely given that they didn't discard any of those earlier. There's Star of the Peaks, and now double Bladewing the Risen will do it. Alright, so yeah, Bladewing can also get back Velomachus, which is pretty fun here. But there's another Dragonstorm on the stack, which can get back another Bladewing from their library, and then the legendary rule means they can infinitely loop Bladewing while killing us with Terror of the Peaks. Alright, GG's. Yeah, Historic remains a turn 4 format, so better have a deck capable of killing the opponent on turn 4, or at least have enough interaction to prevent the opponent from doing the same. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw. Our hand's missing an equipment, so I don't think I can keep. This one, not much better. Got a Shadow Spear, and then double portable hole as interaction, but a Shadow Spear is not going to get there. Okay, this hand's also not perfect, missing a way to equip for free. But uh, I don't think I can mulligan more. And then one land can certainly go... Probably get rid of the belt, keep hammer, and then even if we draw our one mana instance, we can maybe equip our warrior for free. And then Kemba and Outfitter, additional top decks we wouldn't mind, assemble, 
can likely find one of those too. Okay, there's our strike, perfect. So, can play hammer. Could also keep a fatal push, but let's get the hammer down. And then, against red-green, we could play around a burn spell and potentially wait to play Wilson and equip in the same turn. Although now I probably want to kill the Anarchomancer before it gets out of hand. And then next turn we could Wilson Resolute Strike to equip. Alternatively I can play Wilson now. Opponent on some sort of Shaman deck. May not have a lot of removal that deals 2 damage for 1 mana. Since they need to pay the ward. And then next turn I can already attack with a huge Wilson. Which may be better since it speeds up or clog by turn. Still risky. If her opponent has a stomp from Bone Crusher, they can cast it for one mana thanks to an Archimancer, take out Wilson, and our plan falls apart. So I think I'm gonna play it safe here, just kill the Anarchomancer, and then pass it back. Next turn Wilson plus Resolute Strike. Plays around a burn spell. There's Harmonic Prodigy, very scary as well. Well, portable hole. Another answer here. So, do we take the risk exiling Prodigy and not equipping Wilson? Or do we just play Wilson, keep up Strike to potentially equip at instant speed to play around Bone Crusher, which we can maybe tempt the opponent into casting? Prodigy does not mess around, a very scary card when it goes unchecked. If I portable hole and play Wilson, and our opponent has a land, they could still stomp it next turn. Which would not be ideal, but at least we still have lures to eventually get Wilson back. So I think we still exile Prodigy. And then I'm okay playing Wilson and potentially exposing it to removal for a turn. Alright, is there a stomp? If our opponent lets us untap, we're in the clear. And Thoughtseize can now have a look. So our top decks have been kind to us. Opponent cast a company response, that's a good one. Finding Ogre and Rage Forger. Fair enough. So Ogre immediately picks up a counter and Chandra versus Visionary. Well, Chandra doesn't do a whole lot. Neither does Visionary, to be honest. So Chandra's probably still the scarier card. Although Visionary lets him potentially play another creature afterwards, and that could maybe get out of hand. In combination with Prodigy, although I guess Chandra could still cast Prodigy afterwards. I think Visionary is actually the pick. And then we can attack, hope they block. And then get this Colossus Hammer equipped. And then at some point we could also specialize Wilson if we draw the right card. But for now we'll get in for 14. So the Ogre has an intensity of 1. If it attacks, it deals damage. Opponent drew another one. And then the Rage Forger has synergy with Shamans as well. But yeah, it looks like our opponent's going to be chum blocking. There's also an artifact, so we could have taken it out with Boseju. Not that uh, the blocker mattered here. Sweet. So we get to see the Wilson plus uh, Resolute Strike combo as well. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw. Our hand is missing a free way to equip. We've got Outcast and Hammer, so we could top deck Resolute Strike, as well as Kamba and Outfitter. And then Assemble can find those as well. So those are the cards we're hoping to find. In the meantime, we've got a Fatal Push as interaction, and then a Shadow Spear, which we can maybe equip onto the Outcast. So not a great hand, but is it bad enough to mulligan? This one's close. The fact that we're on the draw also kind of puts more pressure on us to have a faster hand. So I think I have to mulligan this. And this is much better. We could have the dream curve here of hammer into Kemba into equip a belt. Which does not really require a third land, so a land can go. And then we'll be hammering on turn one. Opponent on a life gain deck. Alright, so we may kind of lack trample in this matchup since our opponent could potentially present lots of chum blockers 
So drawing our unblockable changeling would be helpful. But we'll certainly be able to go bigger than a Voice of the Blessed. So play Kemba. And because we now have a 13-13, the belt equips for free. So that would present lethal next turn. Another Ajani's welcome. And no attack. Alright, would love it if our opponent's forced to chum block here. They did keep up two mana, potentially Boseju. But let's find out. Could have been a nice ambush, destroying the equipment after blocking Kemba. But nope, opponent's in chum block mode already. And then can play the Outfitter. Is there any reason to move an equipment? I guess it can spread out the wealth a little bit. So that seems fine. So we will discount the hammer. And then do we want to move the hammer as well? Sure. So now both creatures get a little bit larger. Could still potentially run into the issue of a Boseju blowing a belt and then killing Kemba. So maybe there was a reason to keep both equipment attached, but no, opponent just plays a land and concedes. Yeah, that was the dream start, attack for over 20 damage on turn 3. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, and we've got kind of the dream hand, except for the fact we're missing green. But still, turn 1 hammer, equip onto Kemba on turn 2. That's got to be the play here. And then we could potentially equip belt for free afterwards as well. Opponent on a green deck, Elves. Okay, Elves could still be a problematic matchup since they can present lots of chum blockers. So question is whether to get rid of the Mystic here or just play Kemba. Don't have the green for belt yet, so I'm not guaranteed to present 20 damage. But I may want to keep Portable Hole for an Elfish Warmaster, which makes a lot of 1-1 tokens, which would be the biggest threat to us right now. So I do think we wait on Portable Hole in case they play Warmaster. And then just play Kemba here. And then hope to find green mana. Yeah, there's a Warmaster, so that's going to be the target of Portable Hole. But our opponent has bought themselves a lot of time with that extra token. Did find green. Okay, so we can play Belt. And then... Smash, opponent will be chumping with a token, and then we'll get rid of the Warmaster. And then our opponent is on permanent Chumblock duty, and we'll see if we can still overpower them here. Best top deck would be Shadow Spear or Changeling Outcast to present some evasion. Assemble can maybe find something. So let's start there. Point likely holding a collected company. Alright, no evasion, no Shadow Spear or Changeling. So I'm tempted to just assemble again to give us another shot next turn as opposed to Thoughtseize to maybe take away a second Collected Company after they cast the first one. So let's attack, and then I can maybe play an Outfitter's second main. So there's Company. Shepherd plus Imperius Perfect. Opponent still has to chum block. So we're unlikely to be in danger of dying next turn at least. And then play Outfitter. Can make the hammer want to equip. And then I should probably move one of the equipment as well. So we have a larger blocker. Don't want to move the belt, because otherwise we would risk losing Kemba, since it still has two damage. Alright, so assemble for Shadow Spear. Can play Shadow Spear 
Although I won't quite be able to equip it unless we also drew a land. And then I could still move the belt for free onto the outfitter. To have a larger trampling attacker. So, yeah, close game. Could still go either way. Clan caller, we don't really mind. Now Imperius Perfect, of course, can also keep making Shum blockers. So, yeah, let's go digging for some evasion. And we found our changeling, perfect. So, grab changeling. And then, that's the best we can do here. So I could attack with both, forcing them to jump with at least one elf. Could have also been better to just attack with Outfitter and keep an extra creature back on defense. We'll try this approach. Could also Fatal Push if really necessary. But again, our opponent's not really close to activating Shepherd. I guess Castle Garen Break gets him a little closer. All right, never mind. Boseju. That's scary, because now they can actually kill Kemba before I equip the Outcast. Get another Overgrown Tomb. So we can still Fatal Push and Outcast, and Fatal Push has Revolt enabled now. So we can actually kill Imperius Perfect. I should probably still wait for Blockers to be declared. Okay, opponent chumps Outfitter, and then Imperius Perfect on Kemba. So now if I Fatal Push Clan Caller, Perfect also still dies. And our opponent loses almost everything. And then we can still play an Outcast, which I can equip for one mana on the following turn. Alright, don't have the belt to present lethal anymore. But we can kill them over the course of two turns. And then Lurus can maybe get the belt in play next turn as well. Alright, so... Pretty interesting game, all things considered. Opponent putting up a fight. And at 18 I feel relatively safe. Maybe a Crater Hoof Behemoth could still get us out of nowhere. But that's about it, and our opponent concedes. Awesome! Alright, so we got to see our equipment deck in action, facing quite a few top tier decks in the format, like the Blue Red Wizards and Mono Green Elves. Now there are still other matchups out there that can be a little bit more challenging, like the various Blue White Affinity or Artifact decks, as they can present indestructible blockers through Darksteel Citadel Plus and Soul Artifact, and they can also potentially get rid of our equipment with an opposing portable hole, so even after getting a hammer down and potentially discounting it with Outfitter, the opponent could still get rid of it, and of course our deck needs our hammer or belt to function. So that matchup can be tricky, but otherwise I've been having a good time playing this cat equipment deck in Historic, and we might even get some more upgrades soon with Innistrad Remastered, introducing Sigarda's Aid as another free way to equip our hammer or belt. So yeah, that's gonna do it for today's gameplay. Wanna thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also wanna thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd. Thank you.